So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys two ways to build a new $500 gaming PC right now here in 2019. First, I'm gonna show you how to build a pure price to performance build, and then I'm gonna show you how to build a much more baller looking gaming PC that sacrifices a little performance. Either of them are really great options. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm going to be showing you guys two ways to build a new $500 gaming PC right now here in 2019 without any crazy deals or anything like that. And if you're new here and you want to see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's start building these things. All right, so to kick off these guides, let's start with the pure price to performance build that may not look the prettiest, but oh man, this thing is pretty darn powerful for just 500 bucks. The first part up is the CPU, and here I decided to go with the Ryzen 3 2200G, but don't worry, we're also throwing a GPU in here so we're not using the integrated graphics. Now some of you might think it's weird to pair a graphics card with an APU, but the fact of the matter is is that the 2200G is still a really good Ryzen 3 processor with or without the integrated graphics. It's rocking four cores that can be overclocked and we just don't have enough money to get a Ryzen 5. The next part up is the motherboard and I went with this ASRock B450 HDV, which doesn't have a lot of features and not the best VRMs for overclock but this will allow us to save some money for more important parts later. Speaking of which, the graphics card that we're gonna pair with the Ryzen 2200G is this four gigabyte power cooler RX 570, which you can actually pick up right now for just $145. Now power cooler may not be the best graphics card brand on the planet right now, but the fact that we can squeeze in an RX 570 in a $500 build is just insane. Seriously, if you search on YouTube for other $500 builds, you're gonna find all of these quote experts using the integrated graphics graphics with the Ryzen 2200G or 2400G, this build that we're talking about today will be performing miles better than ones like that. Moving on to RAM, here I went with this Team Vulcan 16GB DDR4 3000MHz kit because honestly it's the cheapest 3000MHz kit that I could find and I've actually tested this exact kit and it's been working great with Ryzen. Moving on down the parts list we come to storage and unfortunately I had to only go with this 1TB Seagate Barracuda drive and I could not afford an SSD. This is the only part of the build that I really don't like, if you 100% can only spend $500, then I simply couldn't fit the SSD in this build, but if you can squeeze out an extra $20, which most of you probably can, then I would really recommend getting an SSD. It's not the end of the world if you don't have one, but I would definitely recommend getting one. Next up, we have the power supply, and I went with this EVGA BT 450 watt bronze certified unit, which you can always find around the internet for 30 bucks. Now keep in mind, I didn't want to include any crazy deals for this build guide, but this power supply does go on sale down to $20 quite often, so if you can save some money here, then I would recommend putting that extra money in an SSD. And finally, the last part on this parts list is the Rosewell FBM X1 Micro ATX case, which I actually just featured in my $300 build guide. This case looks pretty slick for only costing $27, and there really aren't any issues with it. So here you have it. This is the complete parts list, which you can find down in the description if you're looking for what I think is the best price to performance build you can find for $500. Before getting into the next build, I just want to reiterate that I did not include any crazy once in a lifetime deals because I want this guy to be practical. So please don't comment down in the comment section that your build is much better because you found a GTX 1060 for like $20. Moving on to the next build, as you can see here, this $500 build is all about looking good as we definitely had to sacrifice some performance. Before starting, I do wanna mention that this build does set you up for some serious upgradability. So honestly, this is a pretty good start if you're trying to put together a seven or $800 build later in the future. Starting with the CPU again, this time I went with the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G and this time we are indeed going to stick with the integrated graphics. This four core eight threaded unlock processor is an absolute beast with integrated graphics that you can use for the time being and then you can later throw in a very high end graphics card without being a bottleneck. Next up we have the motherboard and here I went with this MSI B450 Gaming Plus Micro ATX board because A it has really good reviews, B it has decent VRMs for overclocking and C it 
it definitely fits the red and black theme that I decided to go with. The RAM that I selected for this red and black theme $500 build is this 16 gigabyte G-Skill DDR4 3000 megahertz kit because this was the cheapest red kit that I could find at this higher speed. As most of you probably already know, Ryzen does indeed like really fast RAM, so I didn't want to cheap out on the speed in either of these two builds. Next up, we have the storage, and for this build, because we didn't spend money on a graphics card, I was able to fit in an SSD, and I went with this SanDisk 120 gigabyte, which is perfect for your boot drive and your most used programs and games. I also chose this one because it fits our red and black theme. Feel free to go with any other SSD around this price if you don't care that much about aesthetics. Next up for our bigger storage, I went with this same Seagate Barracuda 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. I personally always go for these Seagate Barracuda drives because I feel like they're faster and more reliable than the WD Blues, but feel free to go with whatever hard drive you find a better deal on. Next up we have the power supply and I went with the exact same one as the last build, the EVGA BT 450 watt. And in case you're wondering, this cheap PSU does indeed have all black cables, which is perfect for our aesthetic build as well. And finally, the last part to tie in the red and black theme together is the Corsair Carbide Spec 04 case. And this one looks absolutely sick in the red and black color scheme. I actually did a different build guide video using this one as well. And I really like this case. So there you have it. That's two ways that you can build a $500 new gaming PC here in 2019. Now there are definitely other options, but in my opinion, these are the best routes to go if you either want a pure price to performance monster or a much more baller looking theme build that you can improve later on in the future. One more thing to note is that I decided to go with Ryzen for both of these builds because I really like the concept of a new PC gamer getting into the AM4 platform. This ensures that you'll be able to upgrade to a beefier next generation Ryzen CPU in a couple years and you won't have to repurchase your motherboard or RAM, which is definitely an awesome feature. Lower end 8th gen Intel processors definitely look good on paper as well, but it's just my opinion that Ryzen is better in this situation. Once again, these are all just my opinions, but I definitely want to hear your guys' opinions down in the comment section. Also down there, let me know what price point you want to see with this style of video next. I really like making these videos because I don't have to buy all the parts for them. Well, that wraps up my two ways to build a $500 new gaming PC build guide. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because later this week, I'm bringing back the benchmarking. You don't want to miss that video.